Hollington Village where it's Christmas every day. Today, we're going to make Christmas cookie jars. It's very easy and not a lot of time to make, just waiting for the glue to dry is what takes a long time, but they're very easy, inexpensive, and very fun. Great place to put your cookies. Not only do you need to make one of these for Christmas, but change the paper and maybe a different knob and you can have one all year round like I do for my kitchen. So let's get to crafting. Okay, for this craft, you're going to need a pair of scissors or paper cutter, Mod Podge, an empty can of Quaker Oats, a hot glue gun, a paintbrush, pencil, and either a piece of chalk or a paint pen, jute, and a drawer knob, your favorite piece of Christmas paper, and vinyl chalk stickers. Okay, first we're gonna start with our Quaker Oats box and our paper. Um, I do the 18 ounce box or jar, whatever you want to call this, because the bigger ones cause a little bit of a problem. As you can see, when we wrap the paper around here, it doesn't go all the way around. So with the bigger box, you have a bigger space here that you have to cover and it could be a little bit noticeable having the seams of paper on each side. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this um, down here and then we're going to cut another strip to go underneath it along the inside and you'll have a seam here but it won't be that noticeable and um, if you're like me you could just put it in the back so nobody will even notice it so first thing to do is we're gonna measure the can and put it up to its edge here and then measure it down here and just mark it with the pencil. And what I'm gonna do is, you could take scissors, you could take a ruler and draw that whole line down and cut it across, but I'm gonna take the easy way out and use my paper cutter. Actually, I'm going to use the scissors because if I remember correctly, my blade isn't very strong. So what I'm going to do is you can use your paper cutter or I'm going to use my little ruler on here and make a line all the way across and cut it with my scissors. And then that should fit all the way around and it looks perfect. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna measure that extra bit of seam right here. And measure it just like we did the other one. Make another mark. Use my little ruler here to make a straight line. And it doesn't need to be this big as this piece of paper is, so I'm gonna make another line here and cut it maybe about two inches long. So I'm gonna cut this part right here. And the good thing about using about this size is you, this size of can is you only need one piece of scrapbook paper. Now I use paper and not cardstock because since you have that space here and you'll have seams with cardstock, the seam is gonna be thicker, so it'll be much more noticeable. But with the size of this, you'll use this extra part. Let's just do this now and you'll measure your lid, so. What I'm going to do is you don't want to measure this side because it sticks out sticks out a little further. So you want to measure this side and have your pencil go underneath. I like to use um, mechanical pencils because 
you can get into those tight spaces with a regular pencil the wood is too thick you can't get all the way in there so what we're gonna do it's not perfect but it doesn't need to be perfect it's just the lid so we're gonna cut that around and then we're just gonna make sure it's gonna fit right in there and it does fits almost perfect but see it's not completely perfect but you don't even notice it so it doesn't you don't need a circle cutter or anything so that'll go right in there okay so first things first is we're gonna glue the small piece to there and just take your Mod Podge and do a bottom coat wherever you want on here and it doesn't have to be perfect but you want to do kind of a good you don't want to blob it you don't want to blob it on but you want to get a good amount of glue there of Mod Podge get that up off my table and I like these foam brushes for certain craft projects because it gets a lot of glue a lot of Mod Podge on the Mod Podge on the on your product you're working with so it's good to have a good amount of your bottom coat so then you just glue that right on there push down on the edges so you make sure they adhere well to the can and then now you have your first strip and you don't need to wait for this part to dry to do your next strip so let's put Mod Podge on the rest of the thing and on pretty much most of this so let's get let's get to gluing Okay, so now we're ready to add our top piece of paper and obviously start on the side that has your bottom piece of paper and push those, push those edges down and then roll it around being careful that it stays flush with the edges so you have to move it along if you need to to make it even and then push those edges down and then rub it up against the whole can and once again make sure those edges are really flush against there and if I was perfect and could take the time <laughs> I'm not taking the time to match this up there's no way but it doesn't matter to me because it'll be hidden anyway when I put it up against my wall. So there is your simple cover. So we're going to let that dry. While we let that dry, we can go ahead and add our paper to the lid. So same thing. And just stick it right in there push it down spread it to where you want it and we'll let make sure all your corners or all your edges get a tight fit in there I don't want the red showing. There you are. So we're gonna let these dry. I'm not sure how long it'll take. It doesn't need to dry perfectly, just just enough so we so that it doesn't warp too much once we get our top coat of Mod Podge on there. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes and this is pretty much dry. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for our needs. So once again, another coat of Mod Podge. And 
And now we wait for these to dry. Okay, now everything is dry and that took about 35 minutes. You could probably do it sooner, but I mean, this is, this is really dry except for places like this, but we're not gonna be working there, so that's okay. So, um, first thing, we're gonna puncture our hole. So use whatever tool you can, um, a knife, anything will work, and just find the middle and puncture your hole without trying to ruin the lid got my hole you want to make it kind of big so your so your drawer knob will go in there let's unscrew this and squeeze it right into there put the washer on and then screw this back on I don't know I've I think there's a way to get rid of this. You probably have to have a specific tool to cut that off. If any of you know what tool that is that you can get that off there. I have a lot of other crafts I wanna do but can't do it because this is so long. So if anyone knows a tool that I could use to cut that off, let me know and I might invest in one and so I can make some other crafts. And then look how cute that is. And that just goes right on top our thing there and now I want to add my jute around here I haven't done that yet I have another cookie jar that I made for my kitchen that I didn't need to do anything around here but with this one I want to do it you could do it without it still looks really cute but I'm gonna try it with so bear with me while I work actually let me take this off if you're going to put the jute on, take this off first. Okay. Let's get the hot glue gun. And your jute cord. We'll start by putting some glue around. We'll do it in sections. done and let's put this back in there get all that glue off my fingers I am terrible I always get glue on my fingers when I'm working with hot glue I'm sure everybody does but I always do and I always burn myself without fail okay now it's right on top there don't like it you can always do it without the ribbon the jute cord on top okay for our final piece you get your chalk vinyl and you can use your piece of chalk or I like to use the white paint markers And your own cute font right cookies let that dry I like to use the paint marker because for me it comes out a lot neater than using the chalk but if you like the chalk effect that would be the way to go Get that glue off my hands before I pull that up, and I think it's still a little bit wet. And 
and place it on your favorite spot on the jar. Make sure your seam is in the back. And there are our Christmas cookies. It's still glue that needs to dry, but here we are. Okay, so that is our Christmas cookie jar. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button, and if you don't want to miss a single video, hit that bell. We'll see you next time.